How many of you guys like peach cobbler? How about a Dutch oven peach cobbler? Are you in? I'm in. It's a delicious recipe and it's one of my favorites to cook, especially in the Dutch oven. And that's what I want to share with you today. We're actually out here on the barbecue pad and I've got the big offset smoker going. We're cooking some meat down there. So this is going to be like a, you know, an all day cook. I wanted to take the opportunity to show you how I make this Dutch oven peach cobbler. It's actually a peach cobbler recipe that was given to me by my mom. It was also a recipe that her mother, my grandmother used and it's uh, delicious. And I, I do it in the uh, Dutch oven, but you can do this in your, your household oven, or you can even put it in a uh, conventional Dutch oven, put it in the grill, any way you want to cook it, but I like using the Dutch oven. So I'm going to show you how I do it, and I'm going to show you the cook, and uh, hopefully I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to pull this off for you today. So let's come around here, and I'm going to show you the ingredients, and let's get started on it. So in front of you here, this is all the ingredients that you'll need to make this peach cobbler recipe. And an easy way to remember this one, as it was told to me by my mom, this one is called the Cuppa 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 Peach Cobbler Recipe. And what that means is one cup of milk, one cup of self-rising flour, one cup of sugar. And then of course you have your peaches and this is the peaches that we like to use. It's the one can of sliced peaches with the syrup. That's an important part of the recipe, so keep that in mind. This is a 29 ounce can, just for reference there, all right? That's the three, or should I say the four main ingredients. Now there's a couple extras that I personally put in there that I think makes it taste even better, and that is a little bit of ground cinnamon and a little dash of vanilla extract, okay? You don't have to have those in there, but I think that it works well. Also, the size of the Dutch oven that we're going to be using is the 10 inch. This is my Lodge 10 inch Camp Dutch oven. This one's made to be used with the uh, charcoal on the top and on the bottom. It's got the legs there. And one thing that I want to point out is that I grease the inside of my pots whenever I do this and a lot of a lot of breading type cooks and I use the Crisco all purpose, I'm sorry, all vegetable shortening. Just use a paper towel and grease it real well. I also grease the lid, helps continue that seasoning every time you cook it. So you don't have to use this, you can use a regular baking dish or use a regular Dutch oven, but for this recipe, we're gonna be using the camp oven to cook this peach cobbler. Let's start getting this thing mixed together, okay? So we've got our one cup of self-rising flour, one cup of sugar, one cup of milk. We're gonna go ahead and blend these guys together, but I'm gonna start with the self-rising flour and the one cup of sugar. Now I'm gonna point out, a lot of people try to do less sugar these days. There is, you can substitute the granulated sugar for a cup of the uh, Splenda type artificial sweetener if you like, and kind of reduce on your, um, you know, the amount of sugar that's in there. But we're doing this the traditional old school way, so we're using granulated sugar, all right? I'm just gonna go ahead and start mixing this up a little bit. Before we put our milk in, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of the uh, ground cinnamon. Now I don't measure this, I just kind of do it by sight. So I sprinkle some in there. I would have to say that's probably around a half a teaspoon. And we're also gonna shake a little bit right on the top of it whenever we get ready to cook it. So just mix it up good like this. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. It's just kind of a visual thing. You can use as little or as much as you like, depending on your your taste that's looking pretty good right about there okay so now we're gonna go ahead and add our one cup of milk and just give it a good mix until it's thoroughly mixed together and once we get this mixed up we'll go ahead and add in some of our vanilla too It's looking pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little vanilla. Uh, somewhere around a uh, half a teaspoon or so is what I like, just about like that. Just get it mixed in real well. And this is going to make an excellent breading for the peach cobbler. All right, that's looking pretty good. We are ready to get this mixed together. 
All right, so we've got our 10 inch Dutch oven here. Don't forget, well greased with the vegetable shortening. So we're gonna start with our batter. We're just gonna go ahead and pour that in there. And let me grab my tool right here to uh, get the rest of this out. Okay, now we're gonna go in with our peaches and again, Leave the syrup in there. You want to you want to dump the syrup into the into the Dutch oven here. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour them in with the syrup, just like that. I know that might look a little liquidy, but believe me, this is going to bake out to be absolutely delicious and beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm not really trying to mix it like you would normally mix things together. I'm doing, as my mom says, just swirl them together. I'm just trying to swirl the syrup around with the batter, you know, trying to even out the uh, peaches in the, in the Dutch oven here. And once this thing starts baking, it's going to give you the perfect ratio of breading and moisture in there as well. All right, so that's about, that looks about right, right there, okay? Try not to over mix it, just kind of swirl it together. We are just about ready. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna put a little extra cinnamon topping on here. Just try to ever so gently sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on the top. Gives it a nice little bit of color there to go with it. Just try not to overdo it, but that's gonna be good right about like that, okay? So we are ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up. And let me take you down to the grill where I actually um, cook with my Dutch ovens now. I'll show you that setup. I wanna show you guys my Dutch oven cooking setup that I use now. This is my old char griller, charcoal grill that I've had for probably, I'd say about six years or so. And you know, there was a, there was a lot of times that I was going to put this thing out by the road and just give it away. This is the kind of stuff, if you put it out by the fence, within 30 minutes, this thing is gone. And I saved it because I just wasn't sure if I wanted to get rid of it. And what I have ended up doing is turning this in to just a vessel to be able to cook with the Dutch oven to help uh, protect the charcoal from the wind. So let me open it up here and I'll show you my, my little setup. So what I've done is I just took all the original grates and everything out of there. I cut a couple pieces of square tubing that's just sitting right here along the radius of the bottom of the chamber. Two pieces of square tubing. I went down to the local welding shop and had them shear me up a piece of this quarter inch thick aluminum plate right there. And I've got it fitted so that what I'll do is after I come out here to do another cook, you know, you'll have your ashes here. I've got a brush and I just brush the uh, ash right down into the bottom on each side. And then after a while, I just uh, clean it out. So this is an excellent vessel for cooking with a Dutch oven right there. Because once you get this thing, all the charcoal hot and you're ready to start cooking, you just close it up. Now I keep the top vent wide open and then I've got the side vent right here wide open as well. So it gets plenty of airflow through there and then blocks the wind uh, whenever you're cooking. So it actually helps retain more heat because the heat is inside here and it makes your charcoals last a little longer <clears throat> versus just being wide out in the open. So what we're gonna be doing, again, we're using the 10 inch. So I'm gonna run 14 charcoal briquettes on the top, on the lid here. And then I always run eight on the bottom. So that usually on the 12 inch, you'll have like 19, maybe 20 to 21 briquettes. Cause sometimes I'll have like maybe two extra in here on either side, but we're running 14 plus eight at the bottom. So I'm gonna put all these in the charcoal chimney right here and get them lit off. This is my go-to way of lighting my charcoal. I've got my two burner outdoor stove set up and just put the chimney right over the burner and light it off, burn it on, on hot. And usually these things, th this amount of charcoal right here, usually within about 10, 15 minutes max, you're gonna be ready to start doing your cooking. Once they start glowing a little bit on the bottom there, and you kind of see the flames coming up, I go ahead and turn off the heat 
And then what you can do is just go ahead and pick this guy up and I'm just gonna bring it right over here to the grill and let it finish getting hot. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you don't wanna over burn in your charcoal when you're doing this to be able to put on your Dutch oven. Once you start seeing these top briquettes start getting ashed in on the corners or on the side, it's right about the time to dump these things out because if you wait until the whole thing is ashed over, you're actually gonna be losing some of your cook time with these briquettes. That's looking just about right for our briquettes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dump out eight of those right here on the aluminum pan and we'll go ahead and get this thing rolling. Let's put about eight of them down. I'm gonna go ahead and set this right on top of the, the Dutch oven and start getting it a little bit warm here. And we'll just equally space these guys out. One extra. I usually start a little bit a little bit further out so that you can push them in. You want them just right on the bottom radius of the pot there. You don't want them all the way underneath. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna pick up the Dutch oven and set it right there. We'll duck the rest of them right there on the top. So be sure to always have you a pair of tongs dedicated to fire management. I'm gonna equally space all these briquettes out onto the, to the lid. You wanna make one ring all the way around the outside. like that right there just try to I usually sit here and fool with it for just a few seconds trying to get them evened out all right so there we go there's our top briquette set and I'm gonna go around the bottom and just kind of inspect and what I want to do is just push these in until they're right about even with the outside radius or the bottom radius there legs kind of get in the way a little bit sometimes if you don't have them in the right spot. So here's the last one, okay? So just something about like that right there. Now we are ready to cook. So now that I've got the heat set, I always use my timers. So I've got my Thermoworks timer. And all I'm gonna do is just hit start so that I can keep up with how long this is gonna cook. So this should take right at an hour, actually right around one hour and five minutes is what I typically cook this at out here on, on my grill with my Dutch oven. But we'll give you some uh, shots along the way to see how this thing progresses, all right? So now we will go ahead and close it up and let it cook. So we're about 26, almost 27 minutes into, uh, into the cook. I was gonna show you uh, rotating the lid in the pot there. I got a little sidetracked because I had a phone call. I usually do this about every uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. But let's go ahead and take a peek at our cobbler. Oh yeah, there you go. See, that's looking good right there. Looking really good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our lid back on there. So what I'm gonna do though, is turn this guy, quarter turn, all right? And that's why I got my glove on so I can grab the bail handle. And I'm gonna take this one, take the whole pot, pick it up, turn it about a quarter turn the other, other direction. See if I can set it down in there without crushing the charcoal. About like that right there. We need to go that way just a little bit. Okay, and we'll close it up and let it keep on cooking. All right, about another 20 minutes into our cook for our peach cobbler. So we're right at the 45 minute mark. Let's go ahead and check it. We'll give you a peek, see what it looks like. And of course do our rotate. I did add a couple extra charcoal right there on top shortly after that last clip that you saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up We'll go ahead and move it first. Do a uh, quarter turn like that. And then we'll go ahead and let's take a peek using our lid lifter here. That's looking nice, just like it's supposed to. You can see that gooeyness coming up out of the middle. All right, let's put our lid back on there. We're rotating it again, quarter turn the other way. 
So let's finish it out. We'll close it up, keep the heat in there. So we should have about another 15 to 20 minutes and we'll probably pull this guy off. All right, we are one hour into our cook on our uh, peach cobbler right here. I wish you could smell it. That's one of the great things about cooking with a Dutch oven outside is that you can usually smell the aroma for whatever you're cooking inside. And man, it smells good out here on the patio. Let's take a look at it, see how it looks. You can see from our timer, we've been cooking for one hour now. Man, you just lift the lid of that grill and the, you can smell the cinnamon and the peaches and everything, man. It just smells so good. All right, let's take a peek. See how she's looking. Oh yeah, that's looking good. See that bubble in action? So it's right about there. I want to go just a little bit longer and try to brown the top of it just a little bit more. So I'm gonna put the lid back on there and I'll go another five to 10 minutes because you see what's happening. If you bump these charcoals, you see how small it is. So you you don't have the same amount of heat that you're cooking with now one hour in as when you put fresh coals on there. But because it's almost done, it's basically done now, there's no need to start another charcoal basket with uh, charcoal just to finish that little bit off. So I'm just gonna let it cook just a little bit longer and that heat will, re will retain. We still have these two fresh briquettes right there that, well, they're starting to burn in, but we're almost there. So we've been running an extra 10 minutes on this and I'm, I feel that we should be ready to pull this guy off. So let's take it one last peek before we pull it off there. See how she looks now. That is perfect. Looking good. Sorry about the sun. It's got it split in half there, but that is ready to go. What I'll do is go ahead and I'm gonna take this lid and uh, take it right over there to my fire pit and dump the ashes out right there. And then we'll uh, just go ahead and pull the Dutch oven off and set it down. We're gonna let it start cooling. Let me show you, that's what these, these type of lid lifters work really good. That way you can tighten up on it, get a good hold of it. Just like so. And come in here and dump it out. And we can take this guy right here, pick it up that way. We're going to come over here to our table. Take the lid off. We're going to let it cool now. See how pretty it looks here now? And it smells good. So there we go. Just got to let it cool a little bit and later on we'll give it a taste test. All right, so I've been tending to the, uh, the pit over here all afternoon. This has been uh, cooling for a good solid hour out here. Got it covered up and uh, I'm ready to tear into it and see how it is. So let's pan you down here and we'll serve it up. I'll do a taste test and hopefully it's gonna be as good as the previous cooks where I have made this before. We've been keeping it covered up with a towel just to help eliminate the flies from uh, trying to get onto it and get a bite. So there it is. The pan is actually still warm, but I can, I can pick it up there. Look at that, man. That just looks so good. Delicious recipe. So let's serve it up. I'm going to serve up a serving of it right here. Trying to get it so that you guys can see the texture of this. You see that fly trying to get in there. It's exactly how it's supposed to look right there. Get the uh, dang dropping the spoon here. Get a little bit more of that topping right there, and I want some of this <clears throat> right here in the middle. And you can see it's not you know stuck or burnt to the bottom of the uh, the Dutch oven there. And it looks good. Let's give it a taste test. This is some delicious dessert that you can cook out at the campsite or cook in your home kitchen or right out back like I'm doing right here on the barbecue pad. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Delicious. Really is. That breading is just... This reminds me of my mom 
and growing up, this is something that she cooked. I won't say all the time, but several times throughout the year, she would cook this peach cobbler. And I always remember how the breading would, um, it would just, it had that texture to it. Absolutely delicious. So we have one more thing that we can add to this and make it even better than it is right here. Let me go get it and show you. If you guessed Bluebell Homemade Vanilla, then you guessed right. <laughs> Hard to beat some vanilla ice cream on a good homemade cobbler. So I'm gonna try it with a little scoop of this right here. Please forgive my ice cream. I've had it in the freezer for a little while. I don't eat it all that often. Just gonna have a little bit just like this right here. I don't want a bunch of it. Go put that back in the freezer. This right here is how a lot of folks like to enjoy their fruit cobblers, no matter what it is. Uh, I especially like it with a blackberry cobbler, the, uh, the vanilla ice cream, but this is just so good mixed together like that with the ice cream. Mmm, just delicious. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing us make our homemade peach cobbler in the Dutch oven there. And got to give thanks to mom for passing along that recipe to me and teaching me how to do it. This is such a delicious peach cobbler recipe to make and it's very easy. I showed you every way right, how to do it right there in the video. So hopefully you guys can give this a shot. Again, it's a great thing to do when you're out camping or on the back porch here. If you got family over, if you're gonna have a barbecue or anything, believe me, fix one of these, you're gonna be the winner at the, uh, the family barbecue. So I'm gonna finish my little bit right here of the peach cobbler, save the rest and put it away. Probably share some of that with the rest of the family and uh, keep monitoring my uh, pit over here. I still got a piece of beef over there that we're cooking all day, trying to get it up the temp and uh, maybe even have a piece of that poor man's brisket later on for dinner. Maybe another helping of this for dessert for this evening too. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, thanks mom for uh, teaching me how to do the peach cobbler. It always comes out so good. And we will see you guys on the next video. All right.